Welcome back to another Growing in Christ. We're here tonight with some family and friends and believers and people who are serious about what Jesus is doing. Amen. Amen. Uh, so tonight we're going to be going part four. And tonight is on Victorious Life. The battle plan tonight is about locating your enemy. Um, and we're going to get into that. You can go over to Matthew chapter 16. That's where we're going to be going. Uh, but we'll open up in prayer and uh, start this evening out. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you're on the throne. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, nothing surprises you, Lord, and that we know that the enemy comes to kill, destroy, to rob, and steal, but you came to give us life. So, Father, today, Lord God, we choose life. And, Father, we thank you, Lord, for all you're doing. Holy Spirit, continue to um, energize us. Uh, continue to uh, open our hearts, our minds, and our understanding. So that, Lord God, that we would be able to uh, become more and more aware of those things around us. And also with the discernment that you would give us, Lord that when the enemy comes, we know when he's coming, how he's coming, and how he's going to do it, because we've already sought you. We've already been in your presence. Father, tonight, open our hearts, open our eyes, open our understanding. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for all you do. Holy Spirit, have your way tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So just going back over everything, uh, first week we talked about being a proof producer. Uh, uh, basically, what is a proof producer? Is someone who is operating in the power of God and are signs and wonders are those that follow. Signs and wonders are follow those that believe. Amen? Amen. We know that the second time, we next week, uh, part two, experiencing your spiritual breakthrough. Uh, we were talking about the early church dependence upon the Holy Spirit. Uh, we talked about some of the five things, five characteristics that were needed. Um, and then part three uh, was truth in power. Understanding is the more truth you understand, the more power you have. So tonight, again, is on locate your enemy. So go over to Matthew chapter 16 and verse 21 to 23. Well, you know what? I'm going to start at 13. Oh, wow. Okay. 13. A familiar scripture. I know it by heart. <laughs> when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I am? The Son of Man. So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and some others. Jeremiah or one of the prophets and he said to them but who do you say that I am Simon Peter answered said you are the Christ the son of the living God Jesus answered and said Simon said blessed are you Simon Barjona for flesh and blood is not revealed to you but my father which is in heaven and I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom and heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And then he commanded his disciples that he should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. And from that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, that this shall not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things that be of men. So we can see here some very interesting things. Um, think about 
again, that we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and rulers of darkness. So our one of our greatest tools is pulling down of strongholds. A stronghold that the enemy would have over our lives, over our families, over the circumstances, the things that are around us, so that we can live a victorious life. So first thing we have to do is because of our flesh, sometimes we don't really acknowledge that the things around us are really from the enemy. What we do is we say it's just human nature or it's this or that. Remember, there's only two worlds that we're living in. There's the natural world that we see, and then there's the spiritual world that we should be living in. And the bottom lines of being is in the spirit realm, if whatever you see in the natural already happens in the spirit. So the battle is not against flesh and blood. It's against the spiritual forces that are causing the results. For example, right now there is war going over in Israel. And we see all the things going on. Everybody's, we were talking about that with Facebook. People are putting things up about praying for Israel and, and so many different things. But people do not really quite understand that it is a spiritual battle. It's not a physical battle. Yes, there are people that are shooting guns. There are people that are dropping bombs. There's all kinds of things going on. But behind that, is a spiritual battle that's going on. Amen. So tonight we're going to look at some of the things. We're going to look at the roots of some of the issues and circumstances that may be in our lives or around us so that we know how to address how the enemy is operating. Because the, the bottom lines up being is 99.9% .9 of the time, it's a spiritual battle. Because as believers, we are fighting against principalities and, and, and powers and spiritual wickedness and rulers of darkness every single moment of the day. Because the whole plan that the enemy wants to do is to get us off the path mm -hmm. and move us over to ourselves, not for us, but ultimately that God's plan isn't accomplished. So many times we look at it as ourselves, that the enemy's fighting me. He's not fighting us. He's fighting us because he can't get to God. So he's fighting us because what he's trying to do is get us off the path that God has already ordained us and already set aside the mission that he has for each and every one of us. So again, we are, a, in a sense, a pawn in the game of life between God and the enemy. That's really, in a sense, where we're looking at. So, so when we go through all of this, we start to see that, go over in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, real quick. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And we'll start at 15. Then the, Lord, then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day that you eat of it, you will surely die. Now, do we understand or do we comprehend that Adam didn't quite understand what death was? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when he said to surely die, understanding is it didn't happen, excuse me, it didn't happen as you would think. When he ate of that fruit, he didn't die. He became spiritually abandoned. Became spiritually abandoned at that very moment. When sin entered in, that very moment, what happened was he became 
fit spiritually dead. He became spiritually dead. And that is why Christ came. If you really think about it, in 1 Corinthians, let me go over to it real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Fifteen twenty-two. It says, "For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive." So again, we're born in our mother's womb with sin. We're already in sin when we are born. When we come out of our mother's shoot, we are now born in sin. So as it says here, all men die. That means, in a sense, two things. All men will die physically, but also everyone is dead spiritually when they're born. Now, think about that. We are dead spiritually when we are born. That's why we need Jesus to be born again. So the world right now is, in a sense, the walking dead. They're walking around, in a sense, spiritually dead. Spiritually not alive because they are still in the world's dominion, in the world's realm, in the world's um, uh, system. So let's look over and see. So the first battle that we fight is to locate your enemy. To locate your enemy. Now, I want you to think about this. Sickness, fear, anxiety, frustration, bitterness, all that stuff all comes from the enemy. There's no attributes. None of those attributes are the attributes of God. It all comes from the natural conflict in the flesh. So there's a root problem that's going on in the lives of every human being. There is a root. And that root has to be addressed because if that root is not addressed, what happens is it will continue to grow and grow and grow and grow. So when you see people going, in a sense, around the block all the time, around the block, around the block, it's because they never dealt with the root, the root of the problem. And it is a spiritual problem. It's not a physical problem. There is not a physical problem that we have. It's a spiritual problem. And every one of those things causes us to be distant from God and be distant from what God is calling us to do in our lives. Now, if we go over to go over real quick to Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy, in chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18, we're going to read in verse 9, and we're going to go down here. That even in this time, understanding is through history, God has been trying to reveal the enemy's tactic all the time. Remember, this is, this here is a love letter from God, but it's also a knowledgeable information to teach us how the enemy operates. So when we're reading through scripture, many times what happens and we're, when we're reading some of the things that happen to the saints of God, we're seeing how the enemy operates. So whenever you're reading to see what God is doing, we're also seeing how the enemy operates so that we can discern how to locate our enemy in every issue and circumstance in our lives. Because we should become more familiar with the weapons of warfare and what the enemy is using. So let's start in verse 9, and we're going to go down to verse 13. And let's just look at this. Verse 9. When you come into the land which the Lord God, which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the admonitions of ab abominations of those nations. 
you sh you should look you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations you shall not learn to follow the abominations or the bad things or the issues or the circumstances that other nations are doing there shall verse 10 there shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire or one who practices witchcraft or soothsaying or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer verse 11 or one who can who conjures spells or a medium or a spiritualist or one who calls up the dead for all who do these things are an abomination to the lord and because of these abominations the lord your god drives them out from before you you shall be blameless before the lord your god for these nations which you will dispossess listen to soothsayers and divin and diviners but as you but as for you the lord god has not appointed such to you so if you look through all of this right here he is talking about god is telling moses he's saying to them you are going to face the enemy the enemy works in all of these things there is an enemy and his name is satan and he is, and he also has principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and rulers of darkness i know we are in the month of october and i know that as you drive around and i'm sure people are decorating their lawns and stuff and everything and i have to laugh because there are there are houses that are supposedly believers and yet the house is full of nothing but satanic evil things now what god told moses in that particular scripture right there as you go down basically the bottom line was if you find this kill them <laughs> yep. get rid of them because they will come back and they will come back and start to deal with you they'll start to torment you they'll come and do it again and again and again god says kill them god says there was a death penalty if you if you follow after them there is a death penalty but we also know that christ took that death as that penalty on the cross for us so why would anyone want to glorify evil and demonic things when you think about it it's just fun it's just cute well the bottom lines of being is we don't fight against flesh and blood we fight against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and rulers of darkness the thing that ends up being is every time we look at that we don't grasp the fact that what we're doing is we're handing over an open door for the enemy to cause whatever he wants into our lives we just open the door and say here come on in and have a heyday and don't and don't realize the battle that is going on and the fight that we continue to go on so turn over to isaiah isaiah chapter 14. <clears throat> isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 to 14. and i know we're all familiar with this scripture Think about it. from the very, 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 very beginning in the Garden of Eden, Satan has been trying to use every weapon, every tactic, every strategy, anything, as we talked about a little bit earlier, to hinder God's will, to hinder 
God's will, not our will, to hinder God's will. And so what happens is so many times, think about it, we look at ourselves as we're fighting the enemy. Yeah. We're not really fighting the enemy. The bottom line of being is the enemy is trying to get at God because he can't get at God. Mm -hmm. So he's going to use us for the, what's the purpose. God has already given us a plan and a purpose, something to do, a mission. Be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth. There's a mission for each and every one of us. So what the enemy will do is, is get every tactic, everything in our past that we know has been a hindrance to us in the past and bring it up and try to use it again to try to continue to get us off of God's perfect will. That's the plan. Amen. That's the enemy's plan. Who does he use? He uses anybody he can try to, he'll use family, he'll use friends, he'll use workers, he'll use your employers, he'll use landlords, he'll use whoever he can. He'll use, it doesn't matter whether you're a blood-bought child of God. The bottom line ends up being this, he will try every tactic to get us to not be completing God's will in our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we need to locate the enemy. Second, we have to do is know the enemy. You think about it. I'm sure that right now with, with these boats that are going and the cruisers that are going and all the things that are being laid out right now, that there is a tactic going on. They're planning what to do in case something happens. So think about it. Our prayer life should not be when we're in the foxhole. Our prayer life should be when you sense or discern that something is going amiss. Something's off. Something's not right. You feel a check in your spirit. Maybe, maybe there's something that's, you just, you know what I mean? You just feel a little bit off. Something's not right. At that point is the time where our prayer and our uh, intimate relationship with God and the Holy Spirit becomes so, so critical. Because in those times, if you go back and you look at all the prophets, all the men and women of God in the Old Testament, they were always prepared. And as soon as they saw something was going on, they went right to God. Because they had an intimate relationship with him. They knew that if they called on God, that God would deliver them. God would protect them. God would take care of them. God would do those things that only he can do. But what happens is so many of us or so many believers, what happens is we wait until all of a sudden there's a problem. And then when there's a problem, that's when we start praying. And what happens is we sometimes are not praying effectively and efficiently according to God's plan is because we want God to remove this problem and it's not happening. And what happens is we get right into the flesh. But we can pray. That's why, that's why we pray constantly. That's why we don't stop praying is because that prayer prepares us for the answer. So that when we're going along our way, that we, we understand and we realize that the enemy right now, as I was sharing with you about the situation with the texting that I got, I'm already praying. Amen. Amen. It, we laughed in the car. But, all, I mean, it does concern me. And it does go like, you got to be kidding me. But we also understand where it's coming from. Because you know that when you're moving and God is doing some incredible things, what happens is the enemy is going to use anyone he can to try to upset the apple cart, to try to get us off. And that's where we need to have that discernment. So, again, 
of chapter 14 of Isaiah, verse 12, down to 14. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground. You who weaken the nations, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest pits, lowest depths of the pit. When you, when, that's why when the scripture says, pride comes before the fall. Pride comes before the fall. When pride enters into our lives, we are setting ourselves up for an extreme fall. And that fall is not going to be fun. That fall is not going to be delightful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that fall is going to be very devastating. And it can happen in many ways because when pride comes in, in a sense, what happens is God removes his hand from us because that's what happened here. I mean, we're going to get into a little bit more in Ezekiel as we go in here um, about Lucifer. Lucifer, I mean, he was an archangel. He was a pride of he was a pride of God's glory. And we're going to see that. But the thing that ends up being is think about that. How soon, how soon that all of a sudden that it says here, it says, um, for you have said in your heart, I will send that that slight change from glorifying God to I want what I want, and I want it now. And you look around the world today, and how much of it is all about me, 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 me. Not me, but us. Amen. About us, about individual, about what I want. Eye disease. Yeah, the eye disease. Yeah. So, again, um, the second thing we need to know is know your enemy, know his characteristics, and thus then knowing the strategy that he has next. If you go back and you look at the Revolutionary War, and you go back and look at the Civil War, you go look back and look at many of the wars of the uh, First War, Second World War, the, the Korean War, you can go through all the wars. You go back and look at some of the, the, the battle plans and some of the things that some of the generals and those that were in authority, that they, they literally looked at the strategy because they knew how the enemy operated. They knew how many soldiers they had. They know what their weapons they had. They know where they were coming from and where they positioned. We have to be that same way as we live our lives every day. When we do that, what that does is we have discernment so that when we know that something's off, that we know how to pray. Okay, Lord, give me wisdom. Show me how to move in this. Show me how to pray. Show me how to join in with the Holy Spirit so that I know what to prepare myself for. That's how our life should be. That's living the victorious life. That's literally being in a place where we're locating the enemy. We know. Remember when, when Peter, when Peter, uh, when Jesus said to Peter, he said, whom do they say that I am? Whom do they say that I am? Whom do they say that I am? He said, thou art Christ, the son of the living God. Yeah. Understand. Un he said, thou art Jeremiah, prophets and stuff. But whom do you say that I am? He knew who he was. He knew who he was. And Jesus gave him the keys of the kingdom. But again, that mind jumps right into the old flesh. And Peter jumped right into the flesh and said, hold it, hold it, Jesus. That's not going to happen to you. Where did it come from? 
It came from the tactics of the enemy to try to get Jesus not to go to the cross. Basically, yeah. that was the whole thing. Amen. God's will is for Jesus to get to the cross. Peter could have been a stumbling block to the whole thing. We would never have been saved. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus had to turn around and rebuke him. But he didn't rebuke yeah. Peter. He rebuked Satan. Satan. There's a difference. Yes. There's a difference. So again, it's not that we're coming against people. We're coming against the entity behind which causing that. That doesn't mean that you look at somebody and say, well, you know, Satan's all in you. That's not what I'm saying. No. Understanding is where it's coming from. Exactly. What's, who's, who's pushing it? And it's being pushed by somebody. Remember the old thing. Remember, Satan pushes, God leads. If you're being pushed, I'm telling you, 100% of the time, it's not God. Because God's not going to push you. God will lead you. Right. He won't push you. Satan will, Satan will push you. So let's go over to Ezekiel real quick. Ezekiel chapter 28. And let's look at Lucifer in his glory. Ezekiel 28, verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentations for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the seal of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the turquoise, the emerald with gold. The workmanship of your trembles and pipes was prepared for you on the day that you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I establish you, and you were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Now that's Lucifer. Lucifer was the most gorgeous of the archangels. Yeah. And we think about that. What changed it? His heart changed. His heart, mm -hmm. his heart, his heart. And all of a sudden now he wanted accolation. He wanted to be like God. And you think about that. You think about that in all the areas of this world today. That how many people run after the acknowledgments, run after the money, run after the fame, run after the fortune. And it never, it never amounts to anything. It doesn't, it doesn't bring satisfaction. It doesn't bring completeness. It brings emptiness. It brings absolute em emptiness. So let's look at it and be real. The enemy is real. He is real. <laughs> yes. He's a very real being. 100%. He is real. He was created by God. We see it over in Ephesians. Let me read it over real quick. Ephesians chapter, um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. I'll read one. And you and you he made alive who were who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the curse, course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Hmm. You go over to Ephesians chapter six. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Or excuse me, chapter 12. Or chapter 6, verse 12. 
For we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers, the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, do what? Take up the whole armor of God. Not our armor. It's not our armor. It's God's armor. Every bit of God's armor will protect us. Every understanding of the word of God will protect us. Remember, it's not about our will. It's about God's will being accomplished through us. That's where the battle is. The battle is we want to do what we want to do according to our will instead of doing it according to God's will. And when we do it according to our will, what happens is the enemy gets in there and then just starts operating. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. The more we turn over our lives to God and be who he desires us to be, that everything is according to your perfect plan and your will, then what happens is we're walking in perfect peace because the enemy has no foothold. The enemy has no foothold. So again, it's a spiritual conflict. Again, what's happening over in the news, what's happening around here, what's happening in the polit in the political realm, what's happening, what was it, two weeks ago when they had the Republican debate? What was happening was that whole thing that you saw up there was nothing more but flesh. It was all flesh. It was all the human nature trying to control, trying to manipulate witchcraft every bit of it i i just sit there and laugh and it's funny because the world can't see that yeah. those that can discern those that have the spirit of christ those that can see if you understand you realize that's the battle that that's the battle that we're fighting we're not fighting against those that are on the stage we're fighting against the principalities behind them that are forcing them to get to a place that we all agree we we vote for that person and then all of a sudden now the enemy now has another foothold that's the battle we and fight we and we wonder why yeah right. and you try to explain to people and you think you're nuts yeah. you're kook what no there ain't no such thing as satan that's just in the movies mm -hmm. it's he's as real as you and i are real yes. right. And we got we got to understand and realize that. So we can't resolve we can't resolve natural conflict with religion. You can't you can't do it with politics. You can't do it with any kind of power man has. No. Natural conflict is not going to be resolved by any of that. It's only going to be resolved with the spirit of God. It's only going to be in the spiritual realm. That's why when Jesus told Peter. I've given you authority. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. There is a power and authority when we understand that. That 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 the whole concept that the the the, um, the the song that um, uh, touching heaven, yes. changing earth, the song that we used to sing. Yes. Touching heaven, changing earth. Mm -hmm. Touching heaven, changing earth. Our prayers. Touch heaven, which changes earth. We try to change the earth without touching heaven. <laughs> and that's not going to happen. In our lives, what happens is we try to resolve the problem instead of touching heaven and allowing the Spirit of God to show us, show us exactly how to resolve the issue that's in front of us. Amen. He knows. He knows. He knows everything. And he will show you. So why not ask the one who knows? <laughs> That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter two. Second Corinthians chapter two, verse eleven. Read from ten down. Now whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For indeed, I have forgiven anything. 
I have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We're not ignorant of his devices. Amen. You want to know how the enemy operates? It's all right here. That's right. Mm -hmm. He is not a creator. So therefore, he cannot do anything new. He uses the same tactic that was all the way back to Genesis. Every tactic that he ever uses is right here. Remember, he is not a creator. So there he can't create anything new. The same war that fought in the American the Revolutionary War is the same tactic that we could fight that the Israels and and that uh, Israel the Israeli and Hamas right now are fighting the same war. Mm -hmm. The only difference is they're using they're using missiles and bullets and stuff. Back then they used muzzle loaders. They got one shot off, and then you hope that you got a load before you got shot again. That's the only difference. But it's the same thing. The root of anger, bitterness, control. It's the same thing. Nothing changes. So the enemy still uses the same thing over and over and over. Hallelujah. So we should know his devices and how he operates. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and read it, but over in Jeremiah or over in Nehemiah, chapter four, verse six. Um, just if you I can just go real, real quick, real um, this is when uh, Nehemiah was building the walls of Jerusalem, building the walls back. And God gave him a, a chapter four to six. God gave him a mission. It's a prime example. And that mission was to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And for him to do that, he became and had a tremendous amount of opposition. And you can, you can read that a little bit later on if you want, want to go through it. But here are just some of, when you go through it all, here are some of the things. He was ridiculed and intimidated. Yeah. He had threats of physical attack yeah. and confusion. Discouragement. And the spirit of negativism, even from his own people that he knew. There was division among themselves. Trying to force compromise, exhaustion, fear, and the leading of a false prophet. All of that happened during Nehemiah's time of building what God gave him the plan to do. So in everything we do, the enemy is going to use every device, every tactic, everything that he can to get us off of God's will, not for our lives, but for our lives to fulfill his will for what he wants us to do. Think about that. That's the, that's the, that's the process. It's not us. No. It's God's will that needs to be done, but he's using us to get his will done for that particular situation. And the enemy does not want that to happen. So he will get us off track so we don't fulfill what God's will is. And that's where Peter and Jesus in that particular situation. Jesus came so that he would die and he would he would bring us back to uh, the father again through his blood on the cross. So Peter said, no, that's not going to happen to you. But he had to re he had to rebuke that and come right against it. Locate the enemy. Understand the enemy. The enemy was not Peter. The enemy was the device behind Peter. It was who was pushing Peter. Was it a principality? Was it a power? Was it, it wasn't it wasn't Satan? But it was a principality, power, and spiritual wickedness, rulers of darkness. 
behind him, pushing him, pushing him, pushing him. So think about that. When there's fear, when there's anxiety, when there's frustration, when there's bitterness, all of that negative stuff, something in our life, something's pushing it. And it's not somebody. It's a tactic from the enemy. It's a tactic from the enemy. So go over to Second Corinthians chapter chapter ten. Excuse me. Chapter ten. We're going to read from three all the way down to five. The third battle we fight is learning how to <clears throat> lay the axe upon the root and get rid of it. Destroy it. And that's not done by any strategic words that we say or anything we do, but it is basically all done through prayer, through prayer, through prayer, through reading, and most of all, an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit and with God. The more we have of that, the more time we spend. Remember, we're in a time right now that, and I'm just saying, I know for me, it's like over these past, you know, and I know I'm praying against the enemy using me to get so busy that I don't have an opportunity to do this. Right. And to read and become more personal because that is what is needed to be able to carry through so that the enemy, because when you're weary, when you're tired, when you're hungry, when you're frustrated, that's when the enemy hits. The enemy hits when you're down and out. The enemy hits. And you know what? It doesn't just hit you one time. He'll kick you and then he'll punch you and then he'll kick you some more and then he'll punch you some more and he's going to kick while you're down he's going to keep kicking and he's going to keep kicking he's going to keep kicking so what do we see verse in chapter 10 of second corinthians verse 3 all the way down to at the end of 6 for though we walk in the flesh we do not war according to the flesh again nothing that we can come up with no words no actions, nothing that we can do can literally change anything if it's in the flesh. If it's in the flesh, it is not going to work. It's not going to happen. It's only in the spirit. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty where? In God, for pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought captive into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So even in those places where we are struggling, we have to punish our disobedience, repentance, so that we can come back into place of obedience. Because everything in the flesh is not going to bring anything that's righteousness at all, completely. So prayer, the fellowship with God, the Holy Spirit is the only way that we can gain power that we literally will understand what God is doing helping us to understand where we're going uh, to help us through that next problem or that next issue that's coming down the road instead of waiting for it to hit us and then figure it out what are we going to do now i mean i i just kind of laugh at i laugh at this whole thing with us i mean it's one testimony after you know it's just amazing how god you know, and uh, we saw Carol Breck today. She actually, we were at the storage unit. She has a unit right next to right next to us. So we were talking. We were sharing about different things, and one of the things led to another about 
just being able to rest in the wisdom of God. Let God be God. Let him do what he needs to do and just go along for the ride because it will, he will accomplish what he needs to accomplish. And what happens, we get so upset because it, it doesn't fall into our line. Who cares? If it's falling in God's will, praise the Lord. Amen. Just go with it. Exactly. Enjoy, enjoy the ride. You know, sometimes we 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 spend so much time making sure everything is is just let God do it. Because he will. He'll open doors and he'll do those things that only he can do. <laughs> so when things bad creep in, when flesh creeps in, hell breaks loose, and all that stuff happens. Like I said, that's not the time to start praying. Yes, it is a time to pray, but we should be praying before that. That's why we need to pray every day. And we need to have fellowship, not just, well, good morning, Lord. I'm, I'm glad I'm up today. Thank you for what you have accomplished me for me today. And hey, amen. God bless you. That's enough. <laughs> it's a start. It's a start. But literally just sit down and you know what i know for me it's just sometimes it's just sitting down and jamie may not be home and i'll sit here and i'll i'll put the chair up here and i'll just lay here and bentley will sleep next to me mm -hmm. and just be still just be still thank you lord thank you lord for what mm -hmm. you do and you know what? It's like it's like instantaneously mm -hmm. God's right there. Because that's what he wants. That's what he hungers for. He doesn't hunger for the, well, you know, thou art thou this and God, you know, you that's good for time, but what strengthens us? I was sharing with that uh, uh, yesterday um, at church. Mike had come in and Mike was really um, moved by the spirit of God mm -hmm. when we were talking. And uh, some of the different things that I was telling, that I was talking with him. And, you know, I, I just shared, I said, you know, I said, the greatest thing that we can do is just be still before the Lord. Before the Lord. That's what he, that's really what he likes. He likes us to just, mm -hmm. you know, think about the, some of the most intimate times you have with your spouse or with a friend or whatever. It's just, just enjoying each other's company. Mm -hmm. That's it. Nothing. You may not even talk. You don't even have to conversate. Just being there. Just being there. That's what he wants. That's what he, but in that place, what happens is, you know, it start, he starts to revive us. Mm -hmm. And he starts to strengthen us. And he starts to open up. And he starts to show us. And he starts all of a sudden. And what happens is we're being filled. And we're being filled. And we're being filled. And we're being filled. And we're being filled and overflowing. Mm -hmm. So that we're prepared. So that when things come down the road, we're not empty. Because when we're empty, that's when the flesh kicks in. And the flesh says, this ammunition, is what I, ammunition. Yeah, this is what I this is what I need to do. Mike reminds me of the spontaneity mm -hmm. of how we should be. Where he just lets it go. And whatever's happening at that moment is what's what's happening. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it, it, it it's I'm I'm so happy he's at church to be honest with yeah, you because he just reminds me of those things like yesterday when he knelt down behind in front of the offering yeah. and I just sat there and I thought when's the last time I did that yeah. Yeah. like really the way he was doing yeah. it like not yeah. and, and and I'm I'm you know it was like I was jealous for God with him because yeah. I was like yeah. you know I was jealous of him but in a righteous way because yeah. I was like. Yeah. yeah. Why am I not doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I, I just I appreciate yeah. him so much because he really does allow the Holy Spirit to lead him mm -hmm. in a way that, like, when he apologized, I wanted to turn yeah. around and just yell, "Don't ever apologize yeah. for yeah. that again," because that's what you yeah. we're all supposed to be doing. Yeah. 
you know? And so uh, that, it was beautiful yesterday. It really was. He just, like I said, he inspires me. And just seeing a different way to approach it. That we just don't always... We, well, we, do, we get we get used to our, our our routine of what we do yeah. instead of just being spontaneous okay. as the Holy Spirit would lead. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And being you know being available. So, um, yeah, you think about you know some of the men you know Nehemiah, Moses, David, Paul. You look at Joseph. You look at all the men and women of the Word of God, and you and you start to realize what is it that got them through their situations it was their intimacy with god it was the intimacy with the one that that was the only one they trusted they trusted think about daniel you know you know here daniel gets thrown into a lion's den he had absolute i'm sure i would i would think he would probably be a little nervous mm -hmm. you would think the way we think it mm -hmm. but he might have been Ain't no big deal. Ain't no big deal. You know? Hey, I'm either 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 I'm gonna get chewed up or whatever. You know? But you know, you 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 really when you look at those things, you gotta look at the it's not it's not their faith, it's their relationship. Yes. Because we all have faith. We all believe that God can do miracles, but then there's that relationship, you know. And the early church. So go over to Luke 22 and we're going to finish up. Luke 22, 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon. Indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brother. Mm. Jesus knew, wow. Jesus knew that Peter was being sifted by Satan. And the thing that ends up being is, he says, I've already prayed for you. Now, I want you to think about that. Remember that Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, ever interceding for us. So he's interceding for us even right now. No matter what's going on, no matter what's happening, no matter where we are in our relationship or what's going on, Jesus is praying. He's praying for us individually. And that's, he's praying. He said, you know what? And there's times, you know, when you feel out of sorts. And sometimes you may ask. And like the Lord, sometimes when he talks to me, he does it in funny, funny things. And it'd be almost like, you know, come on, you little knucklehead. Come on, get your, get your act together. You know, but, but he, I know he's praying. I know he's praying for us individually. But Let's let's look at this, and there's five things we want to look at, and then we'll close out. The early church, again, through everything that they went through, uh, just as we've read tonight, and everything we've gone through tonight. Number one, they recognized the existence of the evil spirits. They saw in front of them. I. I've seen, I've been in prayer meetings. I've been in places where it was it was demonic stuff. Do I see that all the time? No, I don't. However, I also know and discern that there are sometimes there is an evil spirit that you can pick up just like that. Mm -hmm. There are some times that people will look at you and walk away. Yes. Many times because their spirit bears witness that you have the spirit of Christ in you. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to be around you. Has nothing to do with anything else. No. This has everything to do with they don't want to be around you. Yes. Um, number two, they they knew evil spirits deceived and possessed men. We also know that today there can be possession. A 
believer cannot be possessed. He can be tormented or she can be tormented, but not possessed. There's a difference between that. There's a spirit. The spirit of Christ is in us. We can be tormented by an evil spirit, but we cannot be posed because we have the spirit of God in us. Number three, they understood that the devil was out to destroy mankind. They knew that the enemy was here to cause havoc and to cause problems and issues. Number four. Yeah. They knew that Christ gave his followers authority over them through his name. So again, as a disciple, same thing. We had that power and authority over every creeping thing, over every demonic spirit. We have that authority, not in our name, not in our will, not in our desire, but in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and only in the name of Jesus. Number five, they recognize their enemy, not the things and not surface results of what they saw around, but they understood and recognized the enemy. Remember when Jesus, Jesus recognized the enemy. He knew it wasn't Peter. Right. It was Satan behind him. Because Satan's plan was to stop Jesus to go to the cross. Mm -hmm. He knew. He understood that. Yeah. So we should be able to discern. Again, we should be able to recognize and understand how the enemy operates. When we read the scriptures, when we see the attacks and we see the things that are going on, oh, man, look at all the problems they went through. Well, don't look at the problems they went through. Look at what caused that problem. Right. What caused that problem was the enemy behind them trying to stop them from doing God's perfect will. And the last thing was they located their enemy and pressing on to their victory over him. They believed that they had that power. And authority. Amen. Satan's called the prince of this world. And Satan is not in control of this world. No. He is the prince of this world, but he is not in control of this world. This world does not belong to him. No. However, we also know that he has absolute authority over every unbeliever. Yes. But he has no power and he has no authority over every believer. Amen. So there is a difference. We have to understand that. When you understand that, you should not fear the enemy because you know who is on your side. Your side is you're covered by the blood of Christ, Jesus Christ, who gave us all power and authority. But when our will starts to walk in the flesh we do usurp the authority over to the enemy and allow him to do what he wants to do amen. and we wonder why we're running into issues and circumstances amen, amen. so praise the lord praise the lord it's been another beautiful evening yes. i hope you got something out of it i hope you locate your enemy and i hope you understand that most of all get a relationship intimate relationship with the father talk to the holy spirit spend some time just being still father we thank you lord for all that you do holy spirit thank you tonight thank you tonight for just lord just embracing us with your love with your kindness with your patience and father most of all with your wisdom and with your knowledge father we know that lord your word is life and Father, Lord, we want to just consume it as much as we can because we know that if we consume it, we will just have more and more life and the power and authority that, Lord, that you've given to us. Yes. So, Father, we thank you tonight, Lord God, for your word. Father, we ask you, Lord, that it's planted in good soil and that, Lord God, that it will produce fruit and not only fruit, but more fruit. Mm -hmm. And, Father, we thank you, Lord, for all you're doing and all you're going to do. Father, we do lift up right now, Lord, our brothers and sisters in Israel. Yes. Father, we pray, Lord, for your protection. We pray that right now that the enemy and his stronghold right now, Lord, would come tumbling down. Father, I ask you, Lord God, 
that you would put a sphere, Lord God, over uh, Israel, Lord, over Jerusalem and all the areas, Lord God, that are under attack. Father, we pray that tonight, Lord God, that somehow, some way, Lord God, that someone, someone, Lord God, would, Lord, be able to just uh, understand that even those that are shooting off the missiles, Lord God, that, Lord, they're saying, what are we doing? What are we doing? We shouldn't even be doing this. Mm -hmm. Father, bring revelation, Lord God, to those that don't even know you. And that, Father God, that, Lord, that they would come to greater understanding that you are Mashiach. You are Messiah. Mm -hmm. You are the one who came. And, Father, Lord God, we thank you, Lord, for all you're doing and all you're going to do. And Father, we bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen.